Bro, I miss those old animations whenever you locked your phone. I'm talking about that CRT off animation back in the Nexus days. Brought back a lot of nostalgia for some of the older folks out there. Or how about that black and white animation that eventually would fade to black? Or maybe just some unique looking ones. Now, most phones don't even have a screen off animation, and if they do, it's usually a boring fade. The pixels are one of the few that still provide a sweet closing and opening effect with a ripple, but still, extra options within the settings for customization for the on and off animation would be nice. As of now, there is no way of getting these extra screen off animations even with apps or root, unless you maybe find a custom ROM that has it. Back before we had these giant annoying notification banners, Android came with less intrusive notification tickers. They're basically a scroll preview in the status bar that displays the text of any incoming notifications. It was simple, took up less space, and was less annoying to deal with especially when watching movies or playing games. But Google removed it ever since Android 5.0 Lollipop, and the only way you can bring it back is by using an app called Super Status Bar. Within it, you just enable Status Bar ticker text, and then you'll also need to disable the heads up notifications with ADB. From there, you should get it to work. If you guys are enjoying this quick style video where it just jumps straight into the action, go ahead and drop your thumbs up to show me and I'll keep it up for the future videos. Okay, now hear me out. Lock screen widgets were extremely useful back when they existed in Android KitKat, and they still can be. Here's a perfect use case. Whenever I went to the gym, it was nice to have my gym membership QR code right on the lock screen to quickly check in. Or if I wanted to check the weather forecast for the next few hours, I could glance at it quickly without unlocking the phone. If I wanted to check my stocks, or not my crypto portfolio, it is really handy. And there are a ton of other use cases I can think of, especially with KWGT widgets. The possibilities are endless. So Google, if you're watching, please bring back the lock screen widgets. We need it. As of now, the only alternative you can use is lock screen widgets, an app that directly adds widgets on top of your current lock screen. It's nice because they're scrollable so you can add as many as you'd like and the entire thing is resizable and movable. I tucked it nicely underneath the fingerprint sensor. This one's more of a hardware feature but still something that I can stand behind. LED notifications were by far the best way to grab anyone's attention whenever the phone received a notification. Sure, we now have an always on display but a physical blinking light is just as subtle and much more noticeable. With some phones, you could even color code it to know exactly what you're being notified about. Missed calls would have a red light, messages would be white, green meant the battery was full, and so forth. Now I know you can use an app like Notification Light to try and replicate something similar, but it's just not the same, and it's got a few disadvantages, such as it can only work when you're always on displays enabled. And your battery could take a hit from having the app constantly running in the background. And if you don't have an OLED, don't even try it. I think we can all remember Google Now. It was a fantastic way to get information quickly that was relevant to only you without needing to ask the voice assistant or searching anything up. Right on the homepage or within the Google app, you can learn about any upcoming events, flight details, incoming packages, birthdays, relevant cards, depending on your location, like newly released movies whenever you were near a movie theater, or a places card whenever you were near a tourist attraction. There was so much useful information packed within Google Now, but it ended up getting replaced by the Discover panel, a panel with a bunch of recommended articles that you will most likely never read. And even then, there used to be a snapshot button to bring back a good amount of those lovely relevant cards. But as of last week, Google killed it completely and now we're just left with dull, boring articles. What's also getting dull and boring are social apps. They're all just an endless feed of text, video, or pictures. It's so boring. Fly, the sponsor of this video, is here to change that. It's a social metaverse, but for the real world, where you can connect with others on a beautifully modeled 3D map of your city. Every building tells a story. The 3D buildings on the map set up a series of postings from the community there. You'll learn a little bit more about the area and be able to know what people are up to. Users can follow and friend others to know about upcoming events and activities that are happening on and off the app. You can browse the most relevant recommendations or tags, search the coolest spots in the city, and find hidden gems that you might have not known about, like the alleyway that is totally graffitied out before you wind up at a log cabin to eat at. You can also comment and like others' experiences on the app, and most certainly post your own to share. It's a wonderful way of keeping in touch with friends and meeting new people, it brings the community together. 
When posting your memories, experiences, recommendations, or activity plans, you drop a pin on the map at the place that you've been to, journal the awesome experience you've had or what's going on, and include a photo or video along with your insight. From there, you can make the post a public post or a friend's post. Friends posts can only include your friends and the public allows anyone on the app to view and comment. I'm honestly really impressed with Fly since it's such a unique and relevant approach to interacting with others in a metaverse that shows what's happening in real time. They're even giving away a PlayStation 5 and a $200 Visa gift card when you post your best image or video of your favorite place with the hashtag, I love this place. The post with the most likes wins. So if you'd like to join in on this social metaverse, Check out Fly through the link in the description. The quick settings panel is also starting to get rid of expandable tiles. For example, on the pixels, you can no longer expand the Bluetooth tile and still can not expand the location, alarm, and a few other tiles. Luckily with Android 12 L, Google came to its senses and allowed for an expandable Wi-Fi panel, but that's it. Samsung is the only one setting a good example by still supporting expandable tiles on a ton of them. Let's hope Google does the same in the future for native Android. A long time ago, in a land far, far away, known as the Android market, you could download or update multiple apps at once. Yep, no more needing to wait around for apps to download one by one. Unfortunately, Google ended up removing this feature because it had a drastic effect on the performance, and it makes sense. I mean, smartphones back then weren't really that powerful and it had very little RAM. Now it's the complete opposite. Phones are lightning fast and come with tons of RAM, so I don't see why we can't bring this feature back. There were even rumors that Google was working on this back in 2019, but it just never got to see the light of day. Maybe one day they'll bring this back, and I'm not saying that I need hundreds of my apps to download at the same time, that would be ridiculous, but maybe five or six simultaneously wouldn't be so bad. I'm about to unlock a memory that you totally forgot about. Android Beam. Yep, the feature that allowed you to tap two phones on the back to send files to one another by using NFC. It's such a marvelous and seamless way of transferring data, and in my opinion, way more intuitive than nearby share. Luckily, there are rumors that Android 13 may bring it back, so let's cross our fingers. There's probably some OG Samsung users out there that have been dying for me to say it. I miss the IR Blaster. For those who don't know, it's a hardware feature found within some old Samsung phones that allowed you to turn your phone into a universal remote. So just by being near a TV or a stereo, you can control it. It's a very useful and a nice party trick too. But of course, I could see people taking advantage of it to mess with others. Still, there are some phones that still carry it like the Vivo X70 Pro Plus or Huawei P50 Pro and even some Poco and Xiaomi phones. But none of the American big name OEMs carry it like Samsung or Google. For all my customizers out there, I think we can all agree that gesture navigation support for third-party launchers needs to make a comeback. Trying to open the Recents menu with any third-party launcher still feels choppy and slow, and whenever you open or close an app, for most phones, there's no animation. Now, some launchers like Nova do their best to support the gesture navigation, especially for phones like the Pixel or Galaxy, but it's still not the same. The only workaround is if you root your phone, install the quick switch module, and use a launcher that supports it like Launcher 12. Then you'll get all the animations and fluidity back when switching apps. This one's a bit small, but I would much rather have the clock be on the right side instead of the left, like it used to be. It would make more room for notification icons and just makes a lot more sense, at least to me, being next to the system icons. Some OEMs like Samsung do allow you to change its positioning, but I want this option natively within Android so that I can choose to have it in the left, right, middle, or maybe even remove it. One of the biggest reasons why I used to root my phone in flashy ROM was just so I could control my media with the volume keys. I could long press on the up key to skip to the next track or long press the down key to rewind or go to the previous song. It was such a useful and seamless way to control the audio without needing to take the phone out of my pocket. Unfortunately though, it never did become a native Android feature, but some OEMs like Samsung still support it and I love it. Another feature that isn't really lost, but I would have loved to see on other phones is Motorola's chop chop gesture to turn on the flashlight. It's a really fun gesture that is so easy to get the hang of. You don't even need to think twice when needing to light up a dark place. The only alternative I can think of is to set up an animation within an app called MacroDroid, and every time you shake the phone, the flashlight gets toggled. 
To be fair though, it's not as fun as chopping and it could accidentally turn your flashlight when you don't want it to if your vibration is just too sensitive. Still, it's worth a shot. The three button navigation is something that I don't mind leaving behind, but it used to have a great hidden feature. Whenever you would long press on the recents key, the app you were currently on would open into split screen. Then you can select another app to stack onto it. Very useful and much quicker than what we need to do now. Also, the fact that you could open Google Now by just swiping up on the home button was also a huge plus. Now, the three button navigation doesn't do any of that, at least on the Pixel. Some phones like the Galaxy S22 still let you open up Google Assistant, but not the split screen option. A good alternative to being able to launch Google Assistant quickly, even with the new gesture navigation, was just by squeezing the size of the phone. It was a phase that I wish never went away. I even love that some phones like the Pixel 4 allowed you to customize the strength of the squeeze. Yep, I love squeezing things. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if we jump even further to the past where the on-screen navigation wasn't even a thing, you'd probably remember about those physical buttons placed on the chin of the phone. And along with the home and back key, there was also a menu and search button. How's that for a throwback? The menu came in handy because no matter what screen or app you were using, you could always open the menu of the app or the system. Same went for the search. So you never needed to do a scavenger hunt just to search something up or find the settings of the app. It was always right in front of your face. Of course, we'll never get this back, but it's interesting to think about. This one's kind of big. That's what she said. Older phones almost always had a micro SD card slot for expandable storage. Nothing surprising there until you remember that a lot of them running Android 6.0 or lower allowed you to install apps onto the SD card without even needing root. Sure, this could break some of the functionality of an app, but it did save a lot of internal storage space and a lot of people loved it. Back then it was useful because phones didn't have that much storage space to begin with. But now apps are the problem because they're a lot larger in size. And if you're constantly shooting 4K video as well, forget about it. All of a sudden, even 128 gigabytes is starting to get jam-packed quickly. This next one, I'm kind of glad that they removed, but I know some people really enjoyed having it. Back in Android Lollipop or lower, your Chrome tabs would also appear within the Recents page as their own separate selection. So if you had 10 tabs opened at once, they would also appear within your Recents menu until you close them. The only reason why I didn't like that feature was because it was pretty invasive. If anyone wanted to use my phone, all they had to do was tap one button and they'd instantly have access to every tab I opened. And if you had naughty things open, then how dare you? Watch yourself. I'm just <laughs> Google used to make tablets and some of them like the Nexus 7 were awesome. I remember there was this tablet UI that was on Paranoid Android and it allowed you to access the quick settings panel from the bottom of the screen, similar to what Chrome OS provides. It's very handy and would make one handed use a lot easier. Plus, since phones are getting so massive now, with some even reaching almost seven inches, just like some tablets back in the day, it wouldn't be such a bad idea to add this extra option next to the nav bar, even if it was just a swipe from the left or right side of the screen. And by the way, an app on the Play Store called Bottom Quick Settings already lets you do this. And finally, I really miss blob mochis. Who wouldn't want those legendary blobs back? Anyways, that's 20 old Android features that I miss having on newer flagships. If I brought you guys a bit of nostalgia, a quick thumbs up would really mean a lot. And if you love this style of video, be sure to get subscribed with the notification bell turned on because I release a video just like this every week. You're not going to want to miss the next one. Either way, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Kapow!